I greet you in the name of Jesus and welcome you uh, to this uh, next study. We are in study number nine and we are uh, looking at uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 and chapter 14 under the theme love, gifts and order. Let me read uh, that chapter from verse number one up to verse number 13, chapter, thir uh, chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in tongues of men, all of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all possession, I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it, does not, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love, as number eight, never fails. A wonderful poem of love. Now, in our last study of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul closed that chapter with a series of reflective questions which I would like us to read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 29. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And finally he says, and yet... I will show you the most excellent way. So we ask each other from that chapter 12, what is this more excellent way of using spiritual gifts so that they stop dividing the church and instead build and edify the church? You remember that one of the major problems in this church is disunity. And in chapter 13 and chapter 14, Actually, beginning with chapter 12, one of the major causes is the use of spiritual gifts. Can you imagine? God has given this church spiritual gifts, many of them, and rather than be united, they are actually being divided. So the Apostle Paul is saying there is another excellent way of using uh, spiritual gifts. And now in chapter 13, we now know this is the most excellent way, the way of love. And the way of love is a subject of the next two chapters, chapter 13 and chapter 14. So let's look at uh, that uh, chapter 13 we, we, we just read at the beginning. He begins by telling them in verse number one up to verse number three, if I speak in tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Now, if you have any uh, love for music, you may have seen some drumists uh, hammering the drum. Now, part of that uh, is some cymbals, um, some things that look like, uh, uh, that look like trees that are hit and they make noise. Now, what the Apostle Paul is saying, that if you speak in tongues and have no love, tongues of men, unamaliza iso, unaenda tongues of angels, unamaliza, but you have no love, you are just as a noise maker as the resounding of gongs or cymbals. Very humbling. Then he moves on and says, if I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. How about that? 
that I can prophesy about uh, Kenya in 2030, that I can uh, give a word of knowledge about someone who is sick in the, in the church, that I can, um, I can fathom mysteries, but I have no love, that I am nothing. And then finally in verse 3, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body, in other words, if I am the greatest Christian philanthropist and I give to the poor, I feed the hungry, then I move further and say, I even want to be a martyr. I want to give my body to be burned so that I can show that I'm very spiritual. That actually if I went into all this without love, I am nothing. So, sounding gong or cymbals, nothing. I gain nothing. That is the humility that we are being called upon as we practice our spiritual gifts. The way of love, the most excellent way. And then of course the Apostle Paul goes on. Between verse 4 to 7 of 1 Corinthians 13, he now outlines the characteristics of love. This is how love demonstrates itself. Love is patient. Love is kind. In other words, as I, as, I, uh, as I practice and exercise my spiritual gifts, I will do that patiently. I will do that lovingly. I will do that uh, kindly. It does not envy. I will not be envying the gift of another. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others by demeaning them. Uh, because I want to show that my spiritual grace are superior to yours. It is not self-seeking. It, it is not easily angered, even when provoked. It does not record wrongs. It does not delight in evil. It rejoices in the truth. Love always protects. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. Love always perseveres. Wonderful characteristics of love. And the Apostle Paul is saying, in your utilization and exercising of your spiritual gifts, be guided by love. Then he moves on to chapter 14 and repeats in verse number 1 an instruction of the most excellent way. The most excellent way that was the end of chapter 12 is repeated here in chapter 14, verse number 1. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. You remember in uh, chapter 13, verse 1, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual uh, gifts. I don't want you to be uh, ignorant about spiritual gifts. So follow the way of love and eagerly, eagerly desire uh, spiritual gifts. Now, the chapter 12, 13, and 14 are talking about spiritual gifts, but I would like to summarize uh, what I understand chapter 13 and chapter 14 in our study would be saying. Number one, don't compete. In other words, if you have been given a spiritual gift and your brother has none or uh, has another one, don't compete. Secondly, don't try to impress. Why shouldn't you compete and why shouldn't you impress? Because those gifts are gifts. You never bought them. You never worked so hard for them. You were given. And there is nothing that any one of us has that we did not receive. So don't compete. Don't try to impress. Be a balanced worshiper. That is the third point. Be a balanced worshiper. And you can find that in uh, chapter 14 verse number 13. For this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray uh, that they may interpret what they say. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Look at verse number 4, 15. So what shall I do? In other words, the Apostle Paul is, how shall I be a balanced worshiper? What shall I do? I will pray with my spirit and I will also pray with my understanding. Did you hear that? I will sing with my spirit but I will also sing with my understanding. In other words, I'll be balanced. Otherwise, verse 16, when you are praising God in the Spirit, how can someone else 
who is now put in the position of an inquirer, say amen to your thanksgiving. Since they do not know what you are saying, you are giving thanks well enough, but no one else is edified. Now, what the Apostle Paul is saying here is, the gifts God has given me, I will use them in such a balanced way that I will do, I will, I will pray with my mind, I will also pray in the spirit. I'll speak in tongues this way and, I, and this other way. I will utilize my mind, but I will also be in the spirit. And in particular, I want to do it in such a way that the people around me who are also worshiping will be edified rather than confused. Balanced worship, particularly in public worship. Number four, manage worship services in a mature way. Verse 20, brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children. In regard to evil, be infants, but in your thinking, be adults. Another version would say, in understanding, be a man. In other words, be mature in understanding and the way you handle public worship. Number five, edify and build the church. Number, verse number 26. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters? When you come together, each of you has a hymn, or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. The Apostle Paul is saying, you guys are very gifted, and yet you are tearing down one another. You are not edifying one another. Therefore, use your gifts to edify and to build the church, rather than disturb and destroy and demolish the church of Christ. Number six, create understanding, not confusion. Verse number 27, if anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at, least at most three, should speak one at a time. And someone must interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. Apostle Paul is saying in your public worship, Create understanding, not confusion. Number seven, seek order in worship. Seek order in worship. Now, order. You remember uh, the speakers of the National Assembly asking for order. Oh, order. In the worship service, there needs to be order. Verse number 29. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. For you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. Instructed and encouraged. Verse 32, which is very helpful. The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. For God, verse 33, is not a God of disorder, but of peace as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. The Apostle Paul is telling us to be orderly, to seek order, to instruct each other and encourage each other in a manner that is orderly, in a manner that is peaceful, so that everyone is edified. And finally, number eight, encourage balanced spirituality. Encourage balanced spirituality. Verse number 39. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly manner. This is a very helpful way of looking at spiritual gifts. The Apostle Paul is saying, be eager. In other words, seek, be excited about spiritual gifts. Don't be so laid back and, and, and fear to seek spiritual gifts just because some brother or sister misused or abused spiritual gifts. Don't shy away from seeking. These gifts are ours, brothers and sisters. And there are many in the scriptures, not just that list that we have just read. Gifts of the Spirit are many. Seek, be eager to have them, to prophesy especially. And then do not forbid speaking in tongues. Be eager 
do not forbid. Basically, the spirit is seek and encourage because when those gifts are manifested in a fellowship, then that fellowship is vibrant, that fellowship is growing, that fellowship is warm, and that fellowship is built up. But here is a caveat. Verse number 40. Everything should be done in a fitting and orderly manner. Now, in some other circles, we say, don't be a kundudo Christian. A kundudo Christian is a haphazard. They do things in a mixed manner that is not orderly. <laughs> so the Apostle Paul says, be orderly. Let everything be done in a fitting and orderly manner. God bless you as you continue uh, to study the Word of God together with your members of your small group and also in the church. May the Lord be with you. I would like us to pray together now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for speaking to us about spiritual gifts, about order. You teach us and tell us and instruct us to seek because these gifts are given freely. You tell us not to be afraid to desire spiritual gifts. And yet you tell us that we need to do it in an orderly manner so that everyone is edified. Help us to do just that. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's continue to study the word of God together. Amen.